Guess who stopped by the Mavericks Dojo for an interview? Martial arts legend Grandmaster Al Dacascos. Eh, this is a short but sweet interview and one that made me nervous as hell. <laughs> he is the co-founder of Kaju Kembo Shuan Fa and the founder of Wun Hak Kwon Do. We talk about his origins in the arts, future projects, and his son Mark Dacascos. He is the uh, Iron Chef or he is part of the Iron Chef show, uh, Only the Strong uh, and Brotherhood of the Wolf. And uh, I want to give special thanks to uh, Sifu Terry Fairclaw for helping me set this show up. Remember, peoples, you are still in the Mavericks Dojo. So I wanted to know, like, what were your first experiences in martial arts as a child, like growing up? I mean, are you from like a martial arts family? was actually um, finding out about the Filipino fighting arts. I must have been, I, I don't know, maybe about five or six years old, um, watching my grandpa um, practice in the, the, uh, the center court of the, uh, the, the um, camp complex we were living in. Um, and he um, actually was practicing um, with his uh, residue workers. You know, they work on the uh, sugarcane fields. And early in the morning, usually between five o'clock and six thirty, they were out there practicing with bolo knives, uh, or, or, or sugarcane knives, and then uh, head out into the fields. Yeah, that's my first experience of seeing uh, live blades uh, being used. Wow. Um, from you know the research I've done in the past, it seems like you have a lot of good genetics in your family, like. Uh, you, what are you like? Half Spanish, Chinese, and Filipino, something like that, right? Right. Yes. Do Do you think that has anything to do with your uh, awesome talent in the martial arts? Uh, I I think it's you know you grow you, you you grow up doing martial arts, but really not knowing that you're doing martial arts because it was so common for kids at that age to be practicing some kind of you know uh, martial arts. You know, the Filipinos would be practicing their there, the Filipino arts and the Chinese would be practicing theirs, and the Japanese would be theirs. I mean, it was pretty much like uh, on the mainland, the U.S. mainland, or in Europe, where kids would be at the early age practicing football or soccer. Yeah, so it was just part of doing it. Uh, you really never, well, well, it was sort of like a way of character building as well as uh, sports in some sense. But you know, it was just it, uh, you know, just developing the character and discipline. Uh, you know, he's very, very uh, hardcore when it comes into the Asian uh, population. Hmm. Uh, I, w I wanted to ask you something about the uh, Kaju Kembo. Uh, were you the one who introduced the name uh, Shuan Fa? Uh, what is the question again? Because uh, uh, you were you were the uh, co-founder of the Shuan Fa version of Kaju Kembo, right? Yes. <laughs> um, you were the one who uh, introduced the name. Am I correct? That's true. And now how is it different from like the other, uh, I guess, divisions of Kaju Kembo? Well, Kaju Kembo in the early 1940s was said to be developed by five uh, uh, co-founders. Uh, bear in mind that the first five co-founders were all in their 20s. Yeah, probably the oldest was 26, but uh, they were young. And uh, during the time that they were... Uh, developing it uh, between 1947 to 1949, uh, these uh, five individuals were were in uh, various disciplines of the martial arts, primarily um, into the the temple section, and uh, all of them were were Christians. Uh, so you know they they this is this this is why the uh, the logo that we have on the Kaju Kembo starts off with the clover. Uh, because it was uh, came out of the uh, uh, the Irish uh, Catholics that were practicing here and call, uh, and then forming the uh, the boxing club basically and and because the Kembo was formed uh, you know and I think you're familiar with Ka for karate Jiu for judo jiu jitsu Ken for Ken for Bo for boxing Western boxing uh, the Chinese boxing never came in until actually later <clears throat> I live here in Hawaii but. Uh, 
you know, for the longest period of time, we only were led to believe that uh, a certain things about Kaji Campbell because there were no internet or, you know, uh, ways of finding out a little bit more into detail of the, uh, the origin and the complexities of Kaji Campbell. It wasn't until this last 15 or 20 years that a lot of the things that, uh, on Kaji Campbell is coming out that, uh, uh, you know, were ended up being uh, myth and urban legends. This is one reason why I'm writing a book uh, uh, on Kaji Campbell, what is called the Kaji Campbell Bible. I don't know, but the objective behind writing this book uh, is to separate facts from fiction because martial arts in general has a lot of myth and, uh, and urban legends, and Kaji Campbell is no different. But uh, that said, uh, you know, the, the, the first five founders um, form what they believe to be the first original mixed martial arts. Um, actually, uh, I don't really call it uh, mixed martial arts, uh, uh, MMA. I use MMA in a different term where I call it mean martial arts because it is pretty brutal uh, hmm. in, in that concept. Um, so when the Kaju Campbell Kempo Karate section was formed with these five individuals, it lasted from the 1947 all the way up into the early part of the 1960s, uh, where the uh, you know kung fu was becoming out. I mean, there was a lot of things that were were uh, uh, very exclusive at that time beginning to show up. So when Kung Fu came out there, Emperor already uh, had formed the Kaju Kempo Tompai section, which means men, uh, Central Way. And it was pretty much influenced with the art of uh, Tai Chi, Pahua, and Xing He. Um, so we pretty much stayed that way. It was Emperor El De La Cruz, and myself. I was at the bottom, uh, at the bottom of the totem pole. We mm. helped uh, Emperor uh, form that. So that was the first section I was involved with in the the evolution of Kaju Kimball. Hello, this is Alex the Maverick Colazzo from the World Martial Arts TV show and host of the Mavericks Dojo. I'm here today with a special report about the award-winning martial arts self-defense school for adults, children, and families in Etowah, North Carolina, Aikido and Hapkido of Hendersonville's Five Ring Self-Defense. Grandmaster Darren Norris is a professional martial arts instructor and part-time writer for World Martial Arts Magazine in Etowah, North Carolina. He is a regular co-host of the World Martial Arts TV and radio shows. His school has been offering martial arts programs for adults, children, and families since 1993. Our award-winning adult program is held Monday through Thursday nights from 6 until 7.30. Students are encouraged to attend as many nights as possible. Our focus is developing a strong mind, body, and spirit through physical training in the traditional martial arts of Aikido and Hapkido. This training teaches not only two of the most highly regarded self-defense arts in the world, but also self-discipline, self-control, self-respect, and self-confidence. Our Hapkido program is personally taught by Master Darren Norris, the East Coast representative for the Korean Martial Arts Instructors Association and Hall of Fame Award winner. The Hapkido program that we teach is approved by the Korean Hapkido Federation World Headquarters in Kwangju, South Korea. Hapkido of Hendersonville's Five Ring Self-Defense has students from the entire Etowah, Brevard, Fletcher, Hendersonville, and Horseshoe, North Carolina community. At this school, you can learn the same self-defense techniques taught to the U.S. Secret Service, law enforcement, and elite military units around the world in their exciting programs. All courses are taught in a police academy-style format for the best possible learning environment. The North Carolina Director of Training is Darren Norris. Grandmaster Darren Norris's extensive martial arts training, as well as his time training police personnel who have experience dealing with real criminals, have given him highly unique insights into the reality of self-defense and street effective real-world defensive tactics. Darren Norris trained in numerous Asian martial arts systems, earning multiple black belt ranks. After many years in the Asian arts, Darren Norris earned master and grandmaster level rankings in five martial arts systems. 
He is a highly sought after instructor and has earned numerous awards and is a member of the Martial Arts Hall of Fame. Visitors are always welcome at Aikido and Hapkido of Hendersonville's Five Rings Self-Defense, 125 Etowah Center Drive, Etowah, North Carolina. Give them a call at phone number 828-388-0635 to schedule your trial lesson. Visit their website at www.masterdarrenorris.com or like them at www.facebook.com Master Darren Norris. This has been a special report by the World Martial Arts TV Show. I'm Alex the Maverick Colazzo. Thank you for watching. The evolution of Kaju Kimbo. And then uh, later on, when I moved to California, um, I was studying with various other Kung Fu groups and found uh, uh, the northern style of Kung Fu and decided that, you know, if Kaju Kambu is uh, an art that's evolving, then we need to put inside the uh, the northern style of, uh, of Kung Fu in there rather than the southern style and and the, uh, the internal. So <clears throat> that said, um, the only name that I uh, could come up with that really explained what we were doing uh, was Tron Fa, because pretty much Tron Fa means the same thing as Kempo anyway, but using it in a Chinese way, a uh, Chinese meaning. And that's when Kaju Kempo, with the uh, uh, spelled K-A-J-U-K-E-N-B-O, was uh, uh, revised and spelled out K-A-J-U-K-E-M-B-O, which signifies that uh, we were more uh, inclined to head into the direction of the uh, uh, Chinese philosophies and, and science. Um, that went from Kaju Kempo Kempo Karate to Kaju Kempo Tumpai and then Kaju Kempo Chuan Fa, um, which had a different set of rules uh, in that. But the, uh, it was it wasn't until the late 1968 that uh, political indifferences within the Kaju Kempo organization, uh, primarily what we had at that time was the Kaju Campbell Association of America up in Northern California. Um, you know, it was a political thing. You had difference, a difference of opinion and so forth. There was a lot of the old timers that couldn't adopt into the, uh, uh, the Kaju Campbell Chuan Fa because they were already hardcore Kaju Campbell Campbell uh, Karaje. So that led me to ask Emperor that I needed to break away from Kaju Kimbo and if need be just call myself a uh, one hop kendo. Um and uh, therefore you know I, I uh, actually had a blessing from Emperor uh, during 1968 69 to go ahead and separate and I did and I did that because uh, uh, you were we were having a lot of hard problems between the hard stylists and the soft stylists. And at that particular time, you know, uh, the hard stylists really didn't appreciate the soft stylists. Uh, and for us, it didn't matter. And uh, I just went head on hog into it. Uh, that's when uh, actually Bruce Lee was coming out and, uh, uh, and then the uh, other people here in the, on the West Coast was coming out with with Kung Fu. By the way, at that particular time, we spelled Kung Fu with a G-U-N uh, instead of the K-U-N. Uh, that was changed uh, later on when, when the, in the, in the mid 1940s, or, um, excuse me, the early 1970s, when the Kung Fu series came out with David Carradine, that they were spelling it K-E-N-G. So then we decided to, 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 to use the, uh, the Mandarin version, which was the K-U-N-G instead of Cantonese, which was the G-U-N-G. So uh, that was the formation of the the, uh, the Kaju Kembo Tronfa, uh, the Kaju Kembo uh, One Hop Kendo version from the other three. Uh, you know, to, to me, One Hop Kwando, which is, by the way, Grandmaster de Costco's, I think is a very beautiful and kinetic martial art. I think it's genius. It, it, you know, it, it does sound very Cantonese. What, what does it stand for? What One Hop Kwando? Combined Fish Art. Ah, uh, I see. That was... Uh, uh, which which was uh, uh, ironic because uh, Kaju Campbell is a, combina a combination of these arts, and I needed to uh, you know have a name uh, pretty close to my uh, the origin you know the Kaju Campbell 
uh, uh, part. But so if you were to if you were to translate both of it, you know, if I were to go Kaji Kimbo, which was basically a Hawaiian uh, uh, word put together of combined of martial arts and the Chinese word of one hop kendo, so it would be Kaji Kimbo one hop kendo. It would be like um, Kaji Kimbo combined fish arts and one hop kendo combined fish arts. That's all it meant. <laughs> uh, basically. Basically, what I, what I was looking for was not a name, but just some kind of expression. And what we do in, in One Hop Can Do, I mean, the minute they became a name and put down in paper, it became a system. And I didn't really care for that uh, <laughs> because uh, One Hop Can Do is constantly evolving. Sure, we made a name by tournament competition, in forms, and in fighting. But the true essence of one hot kendo is a freedom of expression, as uh, in, in when you come into street fighting. Um, let me say that: um, Do you understand music, uh, classical music, and traditional and jazz? I love it. <laughs> All right. Okay. One hot kendo is the jazz of music. Okay. Therefore, we can start something and end, and you will never know how we end or how we got there because. We, we do it by feelings, and there's a lot of improvisation as you go along. You know, when you practice in classical music, I mean, there's one thing about classical, it says that you play, you're playing it note to note on how on how uh, Chopin or Bach wrote it, you know? Uh, but when you get into jazz, I mean, you know, there's a mixture of blues and, and uh, urban legend, I mean, urban uh, uh, jazz and, you know, jazz. So it's, when I, when I go on, uh, like, if say the song uh, "Fly Me to the Moon," it may not sound like "Fly Me to the Moon." You you'll pick it up, but yeah. by the time I'm finished, you'll see all the different notes and everything, and it's just, wow. And then if you ask me <laughs> to play the music again, I may not know because I was just doing it by feeling. And at that particular day, you know, I'm feeling good, but you ask me tomorrow, and I'm feeling down, and that jazz is going to sound a lot more like blues. Uh, <laughs> that particular song. So that's where one hop kendo comes from. So no. Nobody in in uh, the system of one hot can do. Um, you know, we all, we 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 don't look alike. They may have the principles of getting very close to what I do. You know, uh, but they develop their own essence uh, because body types. You know, this you get into karate, everybody's trying to look like the sensei. You know, <laughs> but when you get into one hot can do, uh, you cannot tell. I mean, we, you, the only thing that you might uh, pick up from us is the the brutality, the expressions, or or, or individual uh, uh, attributes. But other than that, uh, you know, it's pretty much free flow. And no fight is going to be going according to uh, uh, static movements anyway. It's all kinetic. Attention, business owners. Reach over 100,000 martial artists a month by advertising with World Martial Arts Media. We can put your product, service, or event announcements in front of your target audience. Advertise with World Martial Arts Magazine, World Martial Arts Radio, World Martial Arts TV, or all three media sources for the biggest bang for your advertising buck. Visit www.worldmartialartsmedia.com and click on the advertising link to see just how amazingly affordable it can be. Welcome back to the Mavericks Dojo. Uh, this is still the Grandmaster Alba Costco's interview. We were just finishing up our conversation about his son Mark the Costco's and uh, you know how their relationship is and uh, if they see each other much, you know things like that. So remember that uh, you are still in the Mavericks Dojo. You know, it's entertainment uh, industry or movie industry, you know. We talk a lot, and he said, you know, that 
uh, you know, the good thing about I, I like it about it is I learned martial arts, and the bad thing I like about it is that I avoid things that you did wrong. <laughs> so there's a lesson learned on good things for him. Um, so yeah, it, we do have a good uh, relationship, especially now that he has his own children. You know. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, do you, Do you have any uh, future projects in the works? Uh, yes, we do, but uh, between my son and I, we can't say anything. We, mm. it's, uh, you know, you, you, you say uh, it's not good to put things out on the table before it actually happens, so we just keep it on the wrap until we, we know that it's uh, in a can, so to speak. I understand, yeah. I understand, and, and of course you said you have that book coming out, right? Yeah, yeah, the book now is called, uh, well, there's two books I have. One of it, the first one is actually called The Consequence of Legacy in the Eyes of a Warrior. Um, it's about my uh, my life uh, growing up and then uh, my battles uh, fighting, you know, because I've had battles, spiritual, emotional, physical, and financial battles, like everybody else, you yeah? know. Right. So I put down, I put all that down uh, as, as a means to to help uh, people, especially young, uh, young uh, uh, individuals. Uh, you know, they, they have a saying that it says, you know, a wise man learns from his own mistakes and a wiser man learns from the mistake of a wise man. Hmm. So what I do, what I do is actually put down all of this experience in my book and, you know, showing the positive and negative side. And hopefully this could be a lesson for the wise man learning from the wiser man. I see. Wow, that's very beautiful. Um, well, the interview is uh, over, and I want to thank you so much for this opportunity, Grandmaster Zacosco. It was a huge privilege and a blessing. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you hey, so much. Have a nice day. You too. You have a I, great day. Are, are you still digging yourself out of snow? Uh, yeah. It, it was really bad out here. Like, we have like three feet oh. of snow. Uh, well, that's unfortunate that you don't have the nice sunshine and light like digging yourself <laughs> out of sand. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. All right, you take care of yourself and God bless. God bless you. Thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.